right, so the next test we're going to talk about is uh, the 5105. So the 5105 is our change of direction test. Um, it's looking at our agility to a certain extent, but really our ability to get in and out of cuts. Um, kind of tying back to some of the things we already talked about. Obviously, we've worked on our sprinting a little bit. We've worked on our endurance, but the, a big misconception is that soccer is a game of forward and backward. We need to be able to go diagonal. We need to be able to go side to side. We need to be able to open up and change directions here. So we need to be able to cut, plant, move. We need to be able to cross over. We need to be able to drop step. All these different movements tie into uh, the demands that we need for the, for the game of soccer here. Um, so it's very important that we're addressing these both within a training session as, as well as with some exercise that we can be doing to support and supplement what we're already getting within um, some of those games and drills that we're doing within our, within our training here. So um, once again, we're gonna talk about four drills that we can do part of our warm-up, um, things that we can do at home just to help us um, clean up some of those um, stability demands, balance demands now that we're gonna we're gonna find with uh, our changing change of direction type type moving patterns here. Um, so if you recall the 5105 really required us to basically run five yards one way, 10 yards another, and then sprint back through five yards. So really what we were looking at is their ability to change off of their left leg, off of their right leg, um, and link it back to then some sprinting mechanics. So um, we, we got a sense of how, how they are on their left leg and right leg. So naturally, if I'm right footed and I'm passing and I'm shooting, I'm gonna already get naturally a lot of work on my left leg. So in, in reality, my left leg is gonna be my stronger leg. It's gonna be more, my more stable and balanced leg. We gotta make sure that we address both legs though. Because once again, I don't know necessarily which way I'm gonna be cutting and changing direction. I don't know when those situations are gonna present themselves where I might have to use that, that non-dominant foot in a sense. So it's very important from a performance standpoint, but it's also very important from an injury prevention standpoint that we're addressing both legs here, that we're making sure that we're giving both legs um, some of that strength, single leg balance, support, stability type exercises, just to make sure that we are strong and stable uh, on both sides for when we need to use it on, on the pitch here. So the first drill we're going to look at, in a sense, is a deceleration drill. Um, it's looking at our ability to kind of slow our bodies down. Obviously, when we're going into a cut, we're running pretty fast, all of a sudden we have to cut and change direction, we need to be able to slow our bodies down. So this first drill is called a drop squat. There's two different ways that we're, we can do it. We can do it a double leg or we can do it a single leg. The first natural progression is just go double leg. So you're just going to start nice and tall. You can clap, you can just kind of react, but really how quickly can you now drop down into that athletic base position. As I drop down into my base, knees are pretty much over top of those feet. My butt's down and back, I have a nice flat back. But can I control that drop? Can I get into that nice base position, weights fall on my foot without leaning too far one way or another without my knees collapsing in? All right, so we're starting tall. How quickly can I drop down, get into that base position? Now I'm in a position where if you ask me to go right, left, forward, backwards, diagonal, I'm gonna be able to react and go pretty quick. From there, now we can start to challenge ourselves and get down into single leg. So once again, as we go into a lot of cuts, we're cutting off our right, we're cutting off of our left. So we can kind of take that same principle, that same idea. We start tall, now can I drop down, find that base on one leg. We're working both sides again, so now maybe we alternate sides. Am I just as strong, just as balanced, just as stable? You know, the nice thing about a lot of single leg drills is that you're gonna get some pretty, pretty quick feedback right away. If I drop down on my right, now I'm naturally doing this, whereas on my left, I'm here, I can pretty much know right away that, hey, I gotta work on this right leg a little bit more. Um, with these drills, both double leg and single leg, two to three rounds, 10 reps, um, start double leg, progress to single leg. Um, second drill that we're gonna look at here is really progressing off of that um, and now turning it into more of a strength drill. Um, so we're gonna do what we call a single leg squat. For a single leg squat, once again, if we're at home, we can use um, a couch, we can use a chair, just kind of as a reference, but really all we're gonna do is just kind of have something there that gives us an idea of how deep we're gonna go. So we're gonna start on one leg. It's a little bit more controlled now, but can I drop down, single leg down and back, nice little touch off that pad, that chair, that sofa, push from that hip, drive back up nice and tall. Very controlled. But now I'm really working on single leg strength. Can I perform that squat to that depth? Can I get that light touch? Can I activate that glute? Push my body back up nice and tall. The nice thing about some of these drills that we're starting to talk about here is that as we get comfortable with body weight, now we can start to almost overload our body a little bit or add, a, add an additional stress. We can add a book bag. You know, maybe we, we put five pounds of books in there. I can have that book bag. I'm holding that book bag now at home. Same thing. Now I'm really starting to turn this into a strengthening drill as well. It's a balanced stability drill. 
we can start to add things to it to turn it into more of an actual strength drill now. Same idea, we're gonna do our right leg, we're gonna do our left leg, two to three rounds, 10 reps with that one. Um, the third one that we're gonna talk about here, we're really gonna go back to what we talked about within our warm up. Um, we're gonna look at that inverted hamstring exercise. If we recall from that drill, that inverted hamstring with us on that single leg, we're bending more from our hips now, we're reaching out, controlled, balanced, we're pulling from that glute, we're pushing ourselves back nice and tall, pulling ourselves back nice and tall. Uh, same idea though, we can turn this now into a little bit of a strength component. As we get balanced, as we get stable, as we get comfortable, I can same idea, maybe I'm holding that book bag just right here in front of me now, and I come down that little bit of weight, still do it under control, but now I'm turning it into more of a strength drill for that hamstring and that glute on the back side. We work both sides, two to three rounds, 10 reps with that one. Um, the fourth and final one, once again, we're going back to our, our warm-up drill, our lateral lunge. Um, same thing, we're gonna turn this one into a strength drill now. So once again, if we remember this one, we're starting tall, we step out to the side, we sit into that hip, we push back nice and tall. So we can work both sides on that one. All right, same idea, we got that little bit of a weight now, we're holding that weight, and we still push nice and tall here. Remember, we're, we're really focusing on sitting into that hip, we got a nice flat back, and I drive, push myself up nice and tall. Two to three rounds, 10 reps with that one.